Okay, so hear me out. I know there are like a gazillion scrap inspiration projects on YouTube and on Instagram with what you can do with your sewing scraps. I mean, we have so many. And this is just one of many, many boxes. This is just my results from sewing yesterday. I never really got rid of my scrap stash. And that's annoying because it's a lot of fabric, it's worth something and I didn't just really just didn't know what to do with them. But then I saw this really cool thing on Instagram. It's the scrap bag. So it's scraps cut up very finely, sandwiched between two layers of organza or tulle or any other see-through fabric, then quilted into rows or squares and then made into a bag. In my case, a very big bag. <laughs> Uh, but you could also make a makeup bag or a purse or whatever. I first saw this idea with Cool Stitches. She has an Instagram account and also a YouTube account. I'll link it below. She was not the person who came up with this in the first place. Uh, I don't know who is. Um, so if you know, please let me know because I'll uh, down below because then I'll I'll check the proper person. Now in this video, I'm not going to go into the into the details of making a beach bag, but I am going to go into all the trial and errors I had with making the quilted fabric. So cutting up the scraps, squeezing them between the very slippery organza. Of course I didn't have organza or chill lying around in my stash, so I went online and I thrifted some on a digital thrift shop. And so that was I was good to go. So I have my scraps. I have my scissors, I have my rotary knife, which is very important, and I have my organza and my sewing machine. Let's make this thing. You'll find once you start cutting your scraps into smaller pieces, this is really going to hurt your hand. So I was really happy that I had my rotary cutter. I also had this old blouse that had a very big stain in it that really could not be repaired anymore. So I uh, removed the buttons and put them in my bottom box and cut up the blouse as well. I was getting a little bit uncomfortable in my dress, so I decided to change into this really cool pajama set that I made recently. I mean, isn't it amazing? So I have my scraps, I have my organza, and then I made a little test piece. So just not to dive in completely unprepared and make a huge bag without uh, actually knowing if it's going to work. Then I decided to make a uh, three centimeter wide uh, lanes on the fabric. I used a ruler to mark it on my sewing machine. As you can see the fabric isn't just distributed evenly, so I have to find a way, I mean, I have to put more uh, scraps in there. And the squares are a little bit uneven, uh, so I have to find a way to make those more aligned, except the organza is very shifty on the sewing machine. And I think the thread is a little bit too noticeable, so I'm going to pick a different color. I mean, making a tote bag, you don't really need a pattern, but because I didn't want to take any risk 
uh, to end up with some shifty or weird proportion bag, I decided to use a pattern from a bag that I had made previously, which is the Apex bag. It has the perfect size that I wanted, and I just used the, the frame size. Turns out, cutting organza, either with a knife or a scissors, it's nasty. So this is completely uneven and not usable. I decided to change to ripping it apart. I swear I have been cutting scraps for maybe three nights in a row and it still wasn't enough so I had to find the last bits and pieces of cuts I still had left and cut them up as well. The fun part for me about this project is that it's kind of like archaeology for me. So you run into all these little pieces of project you have been working on recently and it just it kind of means a lot to you, so to me at least. So. Uh, yeah, that was really fun to, uh, to to see all these little pieces of my the clothes that I made and see them all being merged together into a new product. So now it's time to stitch. I marked five centimeter wide strokes on the fabric. I did it with a marker and then pinned it in place because the fabric would move everywhere as soon as you put it under a sewing machine, so just to keep it in place, just a little tiny bit, I used pins. Then it was time to pick a thread color that was a little bit less obvious than the bright white one I used on the test piece. Then I stitched it. I came to peace with the fact that none of the lines were straight at all and I was actually pretty happy with the result. And then I did it all again! And then it was time for the lining. I made this out of pieces of curtain I got from a friend. I also made a little side pocket with a zipper. I am not going to explain into detail how I did this. I think there are plenty of other tutorials online if you're looking for information on that. It's time for assembly. So I had the outsides, I had the lining, I had the straps and I had some leftover binding from my jumpsuit I made before that I used as a binding here as well and we are ready to go. Usually what you do when you make bags, you put the uh, you put them inside of it, the lining and the outer bag inside of each other with the right sides matching. You stitch around the top and with, in a hole in the lining you pull out the outer bag and you fold in the lining fabric uh, and then you have a seamless finish. But since this fabric was so thick and bulky, I wasn't sure that was going to work and I didn't want to risk it because every punch with a needle I made in the organza well, had an extra risk of tearing it and ripping it up because it's very fragile. Then I added the binding on top and I hand sewed that in place. And here it is, the final result. I am very happy. It's a little heavy, to be honest. I like the finish. I think the finish is uh, very neat. And I like the colors. I like the archaeology. Ar I like, <laughs> I like the archaeology in the in the in the fabric. It's a little bulky, it's a little it's not even straight. I mean, it was impossible to 
actually maintain the dimensions properly. Um, and what I didn't say in the video is the bottom, which is an interfaced piece of scrap fabric that I had lying around. It isn't as sturdy as I, as I wish it was, so maybe I'm going to add a little uh, hardboard piece or something in here. Um, yeah, but other than that, I am thrilled with how this came out. It's so much fun to see your past projects here. There is a little bit of a, a blouse I made. There is my jumpsuit, which also has the binding on top. There is the blouse that I cut up because it had a stain. There's uh, two sun sundresses I made. There are some interfacing. There are thread cuts in there. There is my green pajamas that you saw me wear in the beginning of the video. Well, it was a lot of work as well, but is it worth it? Definitely. It's like, it's, this is such a personal piece right now. It's so, you are the only one who knows where all this fabric came from. And I think it's really cool that I can just carry this with me to the supermarket. And, or to the beach or whatever. So yeah, I am thrilled with this. And maybe I think doing this with tulle instead of organza would be a little easier because the organza is very slippery and the lines aren't straight because that was just simply impossible. But other than that, do this. It's amazing. It's so much fun and nobody, literally nobody has a bag like this. Excellent scrap buster. So uh, that was it. If you enjoyed this video, and I really hope you do because I spent a lot of time and love in, in it. Um, yeah, like and subscribe. I guess that's what they say. I hope to make more videos soon. Uh, my channel is going to be very focused on sustainable sewing and recycling and upcycling. I think this was a good start to that. Uh, you can stay here for tips on how to thrift fabric. You can stay here for uh, inspiration for what to do with your scraps. and yeah, other things that pop into my mind. So um, thank you so much for watching um, and I'll see you next time. Happy sewing.